Hello there. This is Lynn's weight loss journey, week number zero. That's right, week number zero. So I made a decision to record a series where I talk about my personal weight loss journey. Now, I know that those three words, weight loss journey, in and of themselves, can be triggering words. You put them together, the word weight, the word loss, and the word journey. You put them together and it could just be so raw and full of all kinds of crazy emotions for folks. And so before I dive into my weight loss journey, I need to give that background and context of this so you can see where are we coming from Why is it that in a body positive, love your body for who you are, where you are, all of that in that whole context, why is it that I'm choosing to go very public about specifically a weight loss journey, what it is, what it's about, all the caveats. The reason I'm doing this is because then you can decide for yourself when these weight loss podcasts come up, are they right for you? Or do you see the title weight loss journey week number one, week number two? Do you see that and just ignore it and say, okay, these are not for me. They're too triggering. I need to move on. Okay. So what I'm talking about today is all the things that have led up to me getting to the place of sharing with you very publicly in detail about my weight loss journey that I am about to embark on. Actually, I started it a week ago officially started a week ago. The reason I'm doing this is because a lot of fitness influencers polarize. They polarize on the side of either smash your scale, the scale is horrible, it's bad, you are an evil, ugly demon, spawn of hell, if you just dare to go on and talk about a number on a scale and your weight, that's horrible, that's awful, you're going to end up committing suicide. Like, okay, that was, I just went really dark there, but that's really one edge of the polarity here. The other edge of the polarity is all the people who are preying on your wallet and your self-esteem telling you you're not good enough. You'll never feel good. You'll never be good enough unless you do our program and you lose the weight and you, you know, you'll never be healthy unless you lose the weight. You'll never have a lovely life. You'll never find love unless you lose the weight. And here's my fancy program with all these skinny fit people who are way too young to understand what it's like to be in your 50s above and menopausal. <laughs> oh, wait, no, you're 50 and above. Oh, look at here's this person who's 60. Look at how awesome they are. That's the other side of the polarity. Both of those sides, I kind of detest. It, it kind of makes me nauseous just talking about it. I can feel my blood pressure rising a little bit. <sighs> I can feel myself, my mind saying, don't even go here, Lynn. There's too many minefields. There's too many ways you can say it wrong, Lynn. There's too many ways you can offend people. Yeah, but that's not where the gold is. The gold, the richness of life is not being afraid of looking at the nuances and the details and looking at that concept of a number on a scale in a broader spectrum so that you can see the whole picture of what's going on here and make decisions for yourself in your own life. Yes. Okay. So here's what's going to happen. A week ago, technically six days ago, I made a decision that I am going to go on a weight loss journey for the purpose of getting that number on the scale to go lower for me. So when I step on it, I want to see a number that's lower than it is today. My goal is bigger than just that, right? And and I'm just going to be very, very clear, very overt here. I currently, to uh, at the beginning of this journey, before I even started, the scale was showing 180, 180, 180 pounds. 
I'm a little bit more of a lean 180, not, but I absolutely have extra visceral fat that is literally weighing me down and putting some strain on my joints and some strain on my back that I don't really like. And I'm ready to get rid of that. But what this is about is how did I get ready to know to do that? How did I even gain the weight in the first place? How do I know that I'm ready to get there? So let me back up about five years ago. About five years ago, 2018, I published the book Couched Active. It was a book all about health and fitness motivation and how to keep your motivation going. It's a great book. It won six book awards. As I was finishing writing that book, my health was falling apart. And my health was falling apart for several reasons. A big one of them was stress. I had way too much stress in my life. I had some stressors in my life I felt I had no control of. I had some stressors in my life I felt I had no ability to really truly influence without wreaking havoc on my whole life. (laughs) And I didn't want my whole life to blow up. So I decided to swallow the pill, just deal with the stress in my life, suck it up buttercup, and just blaze forward. So because of that, my health fell apart. I um, am allergic to dust. I moved into a dusty environment. It hurt my lungs. Uh, That made it harder for me to exercise. The stress also caused uh, me to develop and be diagnosed with fibromyalgia, which if you know fibromyalgia, it's not a fun day. It's when your body feels like you have a, well, there's a million ways to describe it. For me is I felt like my body was achy and felt like I had a fever. Like, you know how when you get a fever and you're just, your bones ache, everything just, just deep to your core hurts and aches. That's what I felt like 24 seven, but I didn't have a fever for a year. I felt like I had a fever. Um, And then I also had some intestinal issues that were showing up too. Be, and my life, my, I felt just like my life was unraveling. During that time, when I was dealing with all those health issues, that was not the time for me to be losing weight. First of all, because I hadn't gained it yet. <laughs> Yeah, you know, people say like, oh, you're healthier when you're heavier and you're, I mean, you're not as healthy when you're heavy and you're healthier when you're skinny. It's like, no, I was still skinny. And that's when my health fell apart. Not when I had the weight on me. But when my health fell apart, another thing that happened besides not being able to move my body as much like I used to and being under incredible stress There is something about whether it was the meds I was on or my mental state or the stress or uh, it's all of it. It's all of it. I was freaking hungry all the time. The back of my brain, my lizard brain was screaming at me, Lynn, you need to eat. You need to eat, Lynn. Keep eating. You are hungry. Keep eating. You are hung. Come on. Keep eating. I am so hungry. Like, And here's the crazy thing. As I gained weight, I practiced more self-control around food. I denied myself food more than I ever had when I was skinny and more than I ever had when I was my fittest and super fit. I skipped all kinds of desserts. I did the intermittent fasting. I did water fasts. I did, you know, calorie restrictions, but my brain was just like, you have got to eat that. I just, my body was not going to balance this for me. So the scale over about three years creeped up, creeped up, creeped up. And in about three years, I gained, depending on how you count it. And if those of you who use the scale, you know, it depends on how you count it. Um, <laughs> was it my lightest weight? Was it my heaviest weight? Was it in the morning weight? Was it, did I, was I wearing clothes when I had that weight on? I know we know, we know all those games. So over the period of three years, I went from having been thin, skinny, my entire life 
to over three years, I gained, depending on how you count it, 50 to 60 pounds. That's right, five zero to six zero. 50 to 60 pounds, depending on how you gain get, how you game it, is what I gained it. <laughs> yeah. So nobody gains that much weight and has it in that amount of time and has it all lean muscle mass. No, nobody does. And neither was I. I'm not a superwoman. Well, I am, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a woman. I'm a human. And so when that happened, I was also dealing with all of my health issues. So that was not the right time for me to be calorie restricting when I was already not sleeping well, dealing with health issues, completely stressed out, having trouble breathing with my breathing, having trouble with my intestines, managing any food that I put into my body. Not the time to start exercising. I mean, excuse me, <laughs> I wasn't exercising much, but to start doing a calorie restriction for the diet in a healthy way. So I went on a mission after I just like boop, 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 in like three years, boom, 50 to 60 pounds. And yeah, I was having a little bit of a holy cow moment. I got to where my health during that process, my health got better because I brought in a whole team of doctors. I worked my, my regular doctor. I had my heart checked. I had all of like everything scanned, you could have scanned, I had blood work done. I had my I was a young colonoscopy, endoscopy, like, I mean, and, and I was, at, you guys know, I was having some intestinal issues. And I went to a GI doctor and the GI doctor is like, I know you're not 50 yet, but we should probably do a colonoscopy. And I was like, Hallelujah, give me the colonoscopy because I'm having so many issues. I want my life back. So whatever you got to do to figure this out. Yeah, it was that bad. All of that without going into like totally ad nauseum boring detail, I was actually able to figure out some health issues and start healing those health issues. So that took about another year, year and a half to get those health issues under control. Then <laughs> my life on the outside looked like it was really blowing up because uh, my husband at the time and I had to move into a new home. That was hugely stressful. We went through a lot of stressful things. We moved into our new rental. And then at that point was when the marriage started falling apart, or at least when I first noticed the marriage started falling apart. So I had another year of incredibly gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching stress. I had panic attacks for the first, well, maybe not the first time in my life, but I was having panic attacks. I was so freaking stressed out and doing everything I could to keep my attitude strong, to keep myself strong, to heal myself, to eat healthy. But holy cow, that stress was ridiculous. The nightmares were through the roof. That was not the time for me to think about losing weight either. Was it the time to take care of myself? Absolutely. Was it the time to eat healthy? Absolutely. Hydrate? Absolutely. Those are things, those are little levers, little buttons I could push and pull as much as I could to dial things in. But was it the time to lose weight? No, not at all. Because really in earnest, losing weight really takes a lot of focus, a lot of attention, especially if you're going to do it right in a way that keeps you healthy. Whew. So, Six months ago, I moved into the apartment that I'm living in now, and I live here alone. So yeah, divorce happened. I live with my son in a quiet apartment complex, huge apartment complex. It's like 300 units here, huge apartment, apartment complex, but quiet. My life is so much more simple. I am only doing couch to active work right now. For a while, I was juggling two jobs because you guys know couch to active is a startup and uh, it's not it's not paying the, all the bills. <laughs> it's doing well, but it's not paying all the bills. So for a while, I had two jobs. For right now, I've been six months into this much more peaceful environment. I'm only doing couch to active. 
I took about six months to heal my nervous system first because my nervous system was shot. Like I could sit on the couch, relax. This was some of the work I did. Sit on the couch, relax, or try to relax. And I could actually feel my nervous system buzzing. I could feel the tension that in my nervous system. And if you've ever been so stressed out, migraines, nauseous, all that, where you just like, you could sit on the couch for days and your whole nervous system will still buzz and buzz and buzz. I had to heal my nervous system. A few months into living into the house was when I went down to just couch to active only. So I was no longer working two jobs. And that was not the time for me to start losing weight either because I was down to just couch to active as a job, newly separated in my apartment, and my body was like, Lynn, you're gonna watch Netflix and stare out a window for several weeks. And that's what I did December of 2022. (laughs) I still did some exercise. I was still gaining some strength. I was still able to Um, do things and kind of get my head around my new life. But that was not the time for me to start losing weight either. You would think so. You would think so. Like, oh, just grit it out. Just do it. Like, nope, I still needed to heal this nervous system. So the reason I'm telling you all of this is because maybe you see yourself in this a little bit. Maybe you feel like marketing and fitness industry is like, oh, you got to just do it. Grit, self-discipline. Yeah, rah. I really think it's bogus. I really think before a true successful weight loss journey begins, there are so many pieces and parts that need to be taken care of, that need to be in place and supported before you actually see any victory on the scale. So I had to see victory in my health. I had to see victory in my fibromyalgia. I had to see victory in my um, lungs. I had to see victory in my gut, my collagenous colitis diagnosis, which if you know anything about the word colitis, you know that means not a happy day. I had to see those victories. I had to really heal those before I could in earnest start getting that scale to go in the right direction. Then when that was in place and life had settled down more and the I was able to keep a kitchen that had was more food safe for me and be able to adjust all that, then I started pulling sugar out of my diet again, which I did years ago and I've been pretty darn good at it, but um, was able to get that out again to where I legit am not craving it all the time, which is awesome, awesome place to get. Then, only then, with all these pieces in place, was I able to say, okay, is now the time I can in earnest really look at getting a victory on the scale? And the answer for me right now is yes. Yes. My victory is not just going to be a scale victory though, because anybody can eat crap, starve themselves and lose weight and be less healthy than they were before. So my goal is I have gained so much health. I've gained so much strength. Yes, I have the extra weight on me now, but I am stronger and healthier than I've been for years. I'm stronger and healthier right now than back when I was skinny and I got sick. So I don't want this just to be about Project Get Lynn Skinny. I want this to be about Project Get Lynn Lean and Healthier so that my body can move faster, so I have more freedom in my body, so I can do more in my day with my life that'll help support me and make me smile and love what I'm doing. So so for example, this summer I'm going to uh, Washington, D.C., Uh, with my son as a tourist. And I'm super excited. And I want to be able to get there. And I want to be able to not die in the heat. (laughs) And I got to tell you, when I gained the weight I have now, 
for the first time in my life, I had the experience of how freaking awesome it is to be outside and not be cold. Because when you've got an extra layer of fat on you, you're not as cold outside. And it's pretty awesome in Seattle when things are just cold and miserable all the time. There are times I was hanging out with my friends who were, um, uh, you know, a lot leaner than me. And they would be like, oh, I'm so cold. I'm so cold. And I was like, I'm fine. I feel great. Um, <laughs> so I joked that actually really, that was something I'm going to, I'm going to miss. Uh, but when I get to DC, that's one of the things I don't, I, I, I want to not feel like I'm going to die in the heat. Um, <laughs> and you know, I'm not going to die in the heat. Uh, I want to be able to walk those miles and miles and miles and have my legs and my feet and my joints and my tendons keep up with me. I want to be able to teach all the fitness classes I do and use those weights and not have it be draining, have it be energizing and be able to use bigger and heavier weights. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to make darn sure that I eat healthy in a way that supports my fibromyalgia, because I know certain food triggers that trigger my fibromyalgia. Um, Sugar, wheat, I can eat some wheat, but too much wheat, uh, processed stuff. I'm also going to eat high protein So as the weight comes off, I will hopefully be able to stave off the loss of muscle mass. So I want to maintain as much muscle mass as I can and kind of force my body to go for the fat to pull off my body, not just the muscle. We we are not a robot. This isn't a perfect science, Uh, but we do know that eating high protein is going to help that. So I'm going to definitely go that route too. And I'm going to really be hyper aware of my mind, my spirit, my attitude, and how I feel about me. Is this process helping me stand taller? Is this process helping me hold my chest high, have more confidence? Or is this process a way of punishing myself because I feel like I'm not good enough or well enough or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to really keep an eye on that whole mindset piece um, there too throughout this whole process. In a nutshell, I'm going to do it right. I know how to do it right. I'm going to do it right. And I'm positioned in a place where I really, truly can do this. Now, I absolutely understand and know that if you are in your life at a place where you're pre week zero. So this is my week zero, which was actually a five year process. (laughs) If that's where you are and you're like, Lynn, there's no way I'm nowhere where you are, Lynn. I can't, I can't start doing the things to lose the weight because my health is a mess. I'm totally stressed out. I'm just having nervous breakdowns. I'm blah, 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 blah. If that's you, then just know that is where you're at. And to bang your head on the wall, trying to force calorie deficits for the pursuit of getting skinny when your life is chaos and you have all this other stuff going on is so much trickier and so much almost impossible to do it and succeed. And there's a lot of things you can do and I can help you get there. I can help you get to your week one, essentially is what we're saying. Get to your week one where you can actually start doing this. Then once you get to this place where I am, you can really in earnest make this happen for you. Now, Week one, I already did it. So on another episode, you'll see week one, I'll tell you what happened in week one, what I experienced. And then I'm going to podcast these weeks, week by week, and put them out real time. I am not going to wait until I'm at the end goal and then say, ta-da, look, I did it. I'm so amazing. No, I'm going to give you real time, the successes, the failures, the ups, the downs, I really hope it's a straight shot to the top, but you guys know it's not going to be. And it makes me nervous even saying that because I don't know what's going to happen this summer. 
I don't know what's going to happen when I'm on vacation for a week in Washington, D.C., and I don't have, you know, my safe kitchen at home for food. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to see. We're going to see together. And I'm pretty excited about this journey. And I'm really excited that you're going to join me on this. Um, and if you want to get on a similar journey and what what you heard here resonated and you're like, ah, yeah, I get it. Lynn is all about reality and Lynn is all about actually loving your life and not just cramming yourself into the box for a uh, sake of a scale number. Um, yeah, if that resonated, let me know and uh, we can uh, do this do this journey together. Head on over to couchactive.com, couchactive.com, and we'll help you get your goals going. Whew. There we go. Bye-bye now.